they're ugly. Those are tiny. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. So I took a vlog two days ago. Yesterday was the 4th of July. Happy belated 4th of July to all the American viewers out there. And this was a really special vlog because we did something that we don't normally do. We went down to the, the pond on our property and I showed you a really great time during the golden hour on our farm, which is a really great time of day. So every once in a while, it's about once every three or four months, the audio on my camera itself doesn't record properly and it sounds like I'm talking to you through a tin can. So when that happens, normally I just won't post the video, but I really think that it's still a good vlog and I think a lot of you will really appreciate the vlog. The goats are adorable. Calamity essentially does a flip. It is such a good vlog. I wanted to bring it to you guys anyway because I think a lot of you probably won't really care about the audio issue but I wanted to let you guys know that if, if this is your first time here that type of audio thing is not normally something that happens. It's not normally, normally something that I post but I wanted you guys to see it anyways. So I'm going to play that vlog right now and then I'll see you on the other side. If the audio does kind of bug you, you can go to this timestamp and I'll see you there. Hello. Watch out. You're nice. Good boy. Your booster seat, baby. Come here. See, before we show you. This is my favorite time of day in the summer. The chores are done, dinner's done. I'm gonna ignore the dishes. And I get to spend a really good amount of time in the evenings hanging out with the girls. Checking up on everybody. Everyone oh, is doing extremely well. Everyone's on their four feet. We were having a little bit of a bout of coccidia in the barn, but it seems like, knock on wood, that that is behind us now. <laughs> you gonna show them how it's done? <laughs> show sticker or t-shirt or something. Calamity demands it. <laughs> Mars, meanwhile, right there, our livestock guardian, he's apparently been digging an entire den. Look at that. Holy cow. That's crazy, Mars. Wow, good job. Don't do that under the fence. Okay. Seeing that lovely hole that Mars dug, I want to come over and do another fence line walk. I would normally do a good fence line walk about once a week, but I've been really slacking on that. We don't want any regrettable outcomes. I'm hoping that the goats follow us out here. It's always fun when they come to the pond. Just heard a big old bullfrog or something. I know the blackberries in our garden have been fruiting for a couple weeks now and the goats do have access to the wild blackberry down at the pond but honestly I don't know how much or how often they make it to the side of the pond that has the blackberry so I want to check on those. So while I'm here walking along I am going to make sure that we don't have any giant holes underneath the fence or nothing is like laying on the fence. This is some of the wild blackberry. You can tell that the goats don't come down here super often because it's here. 
and there is some fruit. I did tell Levi and the kids to come on down. Over here we have some pokeweed. We still haven't really gotten the knack of figuring out how to harvest this and cook it and eat it. I know it's really common to eat in the south. I think this is past the ideal time. But this pokeweed grows here every year and so when I finally figure it out, I know where to get it. We've talked about, I might actually have to walk backwards so the sun's not in my face. We've talked about actually sectioning off parts of the big goat pasture here. This pasture is about six and a half acres with the barn pasture included. And we've talked about sectioning it off and putting shelters in each section so that we can at least rotate some goats around and kind of force them to eat some of this stuff because if they don't keep on top of it, I'm gonna have to maintain it. And for some reason, they're almost too lazy to come down here and eat this. They'd rather eat the pasture that's in the front that's about this long, which obviously is not very good for them. This looks like first year cane. So last year, when we put in the pasture, Levi had to mow here, so all of this blackberry that's come up here, this is its first year, and blackberry doesn't fruit until its second year, and so there are some blackberries over there on a neighbor's property. Uh, there's some beautiful honeysuckles going by the wayside a little bit. Yeah, can't taste anything. Usually when honeysuckle is fresh, you pull out this little middle part. I don't know if it's called the stamen or what. Usually there's a little drop of nectar on the end and you can get a taste, but it's pretty much gone by the wayside now. Last year we had a decent drought and our pond reduced by half. It was crazy. So it's kind of hard to really see it well through the trees, but from this end over here, all the way to right about where these trees are right here, all of this was dry, but this end had actually started to create a little bit of a pasture that was kind of cool while it was here. But all in here was all pasture. It was really cool, but I'd rather see it like this. In your garden, there's a under, you can find like a whole bunch of blackberries. Underneath? Yeah. I'll have to have you show me. There's a whole lot. Uh, okay, we'll look later, okay? Alrighty. There is poison ivy down here. Goats can eat poison ivy without any adverse reaction. Um, I have a minimal type reaction when I touch it. Uh, it's not great, <laughs> but if I have repeated exposures to it, I will get a little bit of a rush. And everyone says that the cure usually grows near the toxin. So I have been looking for jewelweed, and I cannot find it. So I'm going to be pointing at some poison ivy down here, and if you see jewelweed, let me know. I haven't had a blackberry from here in a long time. This one's sweet. Hey, <laughs> my blueberry. Uh, yeah, I thought they were sweet too. It's because it hasn't rained that much. Yeah, it's delicious. Let's reach through here. So there's poison ivy in here. Hmm. Cause there's poison ivy down You're talking there. Talking about this thing? Yeah, that's yeah, a tree or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a mushroom. It's decrepit. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> I'd really like to be able to make a jewelweed salve or a jewelweed soap, something where when I do react, or any of us react, to the poison ivy down here that we can kind of nip it in the bud. We haven't had a cure for it really as of yet. Is this it? Seed box. Seed box. And then it disappeared. Not jewelweed, okay. This here, I think, is marshmallow. We get a lot of this every year, and I've never done anything with it. Elm family is all it says. Okay, well, that's cool. The app that Levi is using to identify what he's coming across is called the Seek app. We've used it a whole bunch of times to loosely get an idea of what the heck is going on over here. 
And the reason that he's looking for elm trees specifically is we've heard that morel mushrooms grow really well around old elm stands. Old? Or just yeah, elm in elm general? In general is what I've heard. Cool. He's done a little bit of mushroom foraging with his brother, but not a whole lot. We'd like to try to seed something like that around here because we do see mushrooms. We just don't know what they are. And I probably wouldn't trust that app for anything really edible. I guess depending, we have used it to identify a wild rose, but everything in the rose family is edible, so that was kind of a no-brainer. Some kind of mushroom right there. On a tree? Yeah. Wow. Those are tiny. Yeah, they're not like the ones we're growing up. Going fast, the trick. One. Wow! Why do you not know show us? Mm, he's stuck. Mm. Ah! Aww. Plants will like them. Don't fall in. You got some blackberries? They eat them up. You can tell the grass right here and gets a lot shorter and it's, it's like they're content, the goats are content to just be here and I really want to find a way to force them onto taller grass and cross fencing this big area is probably how we're going to have to do that. We haven't talked about Peppa much. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. Pesky is pregnant too. We have fall babies. Yes. And so is Mayhem. So those are our three girls right here, giving birth in the fall. Boba's not pregnant, she's in milk right now. Sweet girls. Sweet girls. Come here, I'm holding it up for you. Yeah, she's smart. <laughs> I was holding it up for her, but she knows. <laughs> she's smart. Shindy, you're just gorgeous. You're the prettiest chocolate. You are. You're a pretty chocolate too. You just have some some light spots, huh? Yeah. Dark chocolate and milk chocolate right here. And then white chocolate. <laughs> coming along with us on our golden hour walk of the pond. We don't do that enough. We really gotta do it more. And I really want to learn a little bit more about foraging. So we have, I think it's the Peterson's Guide to Medicinal Plants and Peterson's Guide to Edible Plants. I would love to hear any suggestions you have for like book in hand resources. I know a lot of this can be regional. We're in the Ohio Valley, if that helps. Okay, back to present day. We're in the little chicken run pasture with Titus, Farrell, and then Buckwheat is behind the camera. And I had sold Titus, or at least someone had claimed Titus, but then ghosted me when it came to actually purchasing him. So Titus is still here. Uh, we're culling him, really not for anything that's his fault. He is just really redundant as far as his genetics go on our herd. He's out of Havoc, who we kept back a lot of Havoc daughters, and we still plan to keep back some more Havoc daughters. And he's out of Pesky, who's from my Rory line, and I have a lot of those goats too, so his use just can't go very far here. So Titus is for sale, and if you know anybody in the Ohio Valley area, 
So I was looking for a really great AGS. Ow! <laughs> I swear he's a good boy. Titus. Let go. Let go, let go. Gosh. A really great, honestly friendly, hair eating, AGS registered, blue eyed, moon spotted buck. Let me know. <laughs> We don't have his babies on the ground yet, but he has settled two of our does. Pepper and Mayhem are gonna have his babies this fall. Over here is Buckwheat, who had been dealing with a little bit of anemia and some bottle jaw. I think he had a pretty intense parasite, whether it be coccidia or worms, but he's absolutely on the mend. They can start to lose condition pretty fast when they have a parasite, and it takes a lot longer for that condition to come back, longer than it took for it to go away. But he's, he's well on his way. This is some of the most lush grass that I have here. Initially when Buckwheat was starting to look sick, I had moved him back in here with the girls because there's a lot of pasture here, and his mom is in here, Christine. Actually, I don't see her right now, but she's in here somewhere. She's over here with one of her grandbabies. But I moved him in here thinking, because he hadn't been separated from Christine very long, I thought she would nurse him again. And there's really nothing that brings back the weight like, like milk. But she didn't want anything to do with him. She didn't want to hang out with him at all, which was unusual because the kid that she had here last year, Elpis, I mean, she would fight to the ends of the earth to protect Elpis at all costs. And her and Elpis are still really close to this day. I don't know what it is with Buckwheat, but she kept kicking him off and really everybody wasn't letting him in the barn. It just wasn't going to be a good situation. He's doing so much better out there. So thanks again guys for bearing with me through some audio issues. It's not common for me to have those kinds of issues and when they come up I usually don't post but it was too good of a video not to post and I appreciate you sticking with me.